And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. I review mostly board games and card games, and I, and I suppose that I bet you falls into the card game category, but I would actually qualify this more of an activity than an actual game. Although I guess it is a game, but it reminds me basically of Say Anything from Twilight Creations. It's something that you can do while, let's say, you're eating dinner, or at a party, or during another game even, or just some other kind of activity, as long as everybody knows that you're playing a game of this in the meantime. Each player is given a card, and this game comes with a deck of cards, and I'll show you this. I'm not going to get it close enough for you to see the writing because I don't want to give away what's on these cards because even when you buy the game, you shouldn't really go through the cards. I'll just show you a blank card for now, but imagine that there's writing on it. Each player is given one of these cards, and no one else sees the card but you yourself. And it has three things that you need to do, each with a point value, one, two, and three. These things are things that normal people might do, but maybe you wouldn't do them at that particular time. Like maybe one might be stand up and cheer. One might be get a glass of milk from the refrigerator and drink it. Or get very angry with someone else. Or something uh, something that's pretty easy to do, um, but not necessarily something that you would have done that night. You might have to go out of your way to, to, to do it. Now, there are some exceptions. If, For example, I mentioned a glass of milk. If there is no glass of milk, you're, you're exempt from doing that. But for the most part, um, of the ones that I've seen so far, uh, and I've seen more than half a deck actually, is they are things that you that you, that are very possible to do while doing most activities. So you get these things, and you you have to do them in front of the other players, in front of witnesses. So let's say your thing is to get a glass of milk. So you go to the refrigerator, you get a glass of milk, you drink it. That may seem odd to some people, or not. But if no one says anything after 30 seconds, and you say, hey. One of my challenges was to drink a glass of milk, and that was my two-point challenge. I just scored two points. However, you get up and drink a glass of milk, and someone says, I bet one of your things you have to do is drink a glass of milk. They don't have to be exact, but pretty close. Then they get two points, and sorry, you don't get any because they, they caught you. And basically, that's it. So the person who has the card, you have a chance of getting one, two, and three points for a total of six points. You will lose a point for each one that you don't try. So there's a pretty good incentive for trying to do them, at least. You get two points every time you catch someone else doing it. And, I, and with point systems that low, it is possible for there to be ties in the game. And I really wish there was maybe some way to break a tie. I would say maybe the person who scores their points first would break the tie. Uh, but, but overall, it's, it, it seems to work out pretty well. What this game does, when you first play it, it will result in everyone being suspicious with everyone over everything. You just stood up. You know, did, what, did you really, I mean, did you really have to stand up? Did you really do that? If, if the, you know, if you falsely accuse someone, you lose a point. So you're not going to accuse somebody unless you're pretty sure it's something that they had to do. But, for example, if on my card is a three things and I just stand up and start cheering for something in the middle of a conversation. That's something I normally wouldn't do. So am I doing it just to get people to accuse me and lose a point? Some people are really suspicious of each other. They're suspicious throughout. Did he have to do what he just did? did you know, did he, did he do that because it was on his card? And then the best ones are when someone does something which completely makes sense, or maybe sometimes is even in their character to do, and then they say it was on their card. And, and so, the game is completely not fair. Your card really might be easier to do than the other person's card. I mean, they, they tried to balance the things out, one, two, and three, and how difficult they are. But in some instances, it just might be easier for you to do something. Uh, speaking in a foreign language, and you're playing in a group of people, like let's say I play with, who's, who do speak multiple languages, and so one person would never suspect this person of speaking two languages. But even so, it's pretty fun, and it does give everyone a heightened sense of awareness. Now. It doesn't work when you're trying to get something else done. Let's say you're doing a meeting or a class or something because people will be so concentrating on this that they won't get involved with the, the actual thing that you're doing. But for a dinner or during another game that's not too heavy, I mean, I wouldn't recommend doing this maybe during a, a, a huge game at Twilight Imperium because you're going you're gonna to have people really distracted. And I'm not sure that you necessarily want folks distracted during a game. But it's a fun activity. It could be used as an icebreaker. I've used it with people, and it's very fun because even shy people 
uh, will stand up and accuse someone else of something if they think that that's something completely out of their character. It's a good idea. It's limited by the fact that these are all the cards you get. You get a few blank cards, but I mean, and then of course, someone's going to have to write these down and it's not going to be the person playing the game. Um, and I, I think it w could have done better maybe if it had come with 200 different cards and ideas because you're going to run out of things eventually. But if you're looking for something, an activity that will work for five or six dinner parties or such, this is not a bad idea. It's small, it's portable, it's easy, and nothing in here of, of these things that you're doing are, is, is crass or vulgar or something that, you know, it would usually be accepted by most folk. And so I, I wouldn't worry about that. It, it, it's family friendly, um, but lots of fun. An entertaining way to, to keep everybody's attention on everybody else. You can't be self-absorbed and play this game. So, fun, but more of an activity than a game, I bet you. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. 